Welcome to TIA Portal and S7-1200 Tutorials. In this lesson, after a short introduction, we're going to continue learning of other bit logic operations which are negative assignment, and also set and reset instructions. After that, we'll do a simple exercise and have a summary. Well, these are some bit logic operations in ladder language. We've seen that normally open and closed contacts in PLC programs are similar to real switches or push buttons in electrical circuits. We've used the assignment instruction to store program results as an output. The open and close branch are used to make parallel path in programs. And also we've seen how invert RLO can be used to invert program result. Now we're going to see what are these instructions which are similar to assignment. First let's see negative assignment. This is ladder symbol of negative assignment instruction. This instruction inverts the result of logic operation, RLO, and assigns it to the specified address. If you remember in ladder language, RLO is the same as virtual power. Let's compare these three line programs. First line has been used in previous programs. When S1 is zero or inactive, the virtual power can't pass through this contact and output 1 will be off. If the S1 contact get one value and change its state to close, then output 1 will be on. Like first line, in the second line, when S1 is inactive, the virtual power can't reach to second output, but here we've used a negative assignment instruction, which invert the RLO. Now, here we don't have virtual power, so the RLO is zero. Then negative assignment instruction inverted to one. So this instruction make output two will be one or on. Well, let me clean here a little. In other state, when S1 is activated, the RLO behind negative assignment is 1. So this instruction invert it and make output 2 change its state to off. As you see, there is an inverse relationship between first and second line logic. Now see the last line, when S1 is inactive, the virtual power can't reach to not instruction, we've seen this instruction invert the power state. So after that, we have virtual power which can turn on output 3. In other state, when S1 is activated, virtual power reach to not instruction which make we don't have virtual power after that. So the third output will be off. As you see, second and third line have same performance. So, we can have negative assignment logic, with a not and an assignment instruction. Ok, now let's see set and reset instructions. Their means related to latching and unlatching. This is set instruction symbol. Its difference with assignment symbol is S letter. This instruction is only used to set state of a specified output to 1. Reset instruction with this symbol is only used to reset state of a specified output to 0. These are used like assignment instruction but with a little difference in their logic. So let's compare these three line programs. First line has been explained in previous slide. When S1 is zero or inactive, the first output will be off. If the S1 contact is activated, its state is changed to close. Then first output will be on. Now see second line which has used a set instruction. When the set is not activated, it won't do anything, so, second output holds its state. It's mean if second output is 0, it will remain 0 and if it is 1 or activated, it will be 1. When S1 is activated and change this contact to closed, 
the virtual power reach to set instruction, and then, this instruction activates second output, either it be 0 or 1. Reset instruction is similar to set. When it's not activated, it won't do anything, so, third output holds its last state. But when it is activated by virtual power, this instruction change related output to zero. Okay, we will do a project to have a much better understanding of these instructions. But now pay attention here. In these three lines, three different addresses have been used for three outputs. Now what's your opinion of this program, which has used the same address for all outputs? The main point is, how CPU execute its program. CPU runs its program from first line to last, then updates all outputs, after that reads and stores state of all inputs, and again, based on stored inputs and outputs run its program. So CPU doesn't use physical input or output in middle of executing its program. Let's analyses this program from first line to last. First suppose I0.0 .0 address with tag S1 is inactive or 0. Then based on first line CPU decide to turn off output 1 with Q0.0 .0 address. Also based on second and third line, CPU doesn't change state of output 1 and it will remain 0. So CPU base on the last decision, turn the output off. Well, at second executing, suppose I0.0 .0 is 1. So this contact with I0.0 .0 address change to close and pass virtual power. So CPU decides to turn this output on. But CPU won't do it until executing whole program. Also pay attention, in middle of executing program, CPU doesn't see any change in its physical inputs. Base on second line, CPU decides to set output and finally in the last line resets output. Now CPU base on last line, decides to turn off its output. As you see the output will be off, either the input is 0 or 1. Briefly, CPU store its input state, execute its program from first line to end, and then update its outputs, CPU in middle of executing won't update its outputs and won't track any change at its inputs. Now let's extend this project which we have done it before. In this project we had a three phase motor which can turn on a big fan, this motor can be on or off with two push buttons. Now suppose in a greenhouse, it's necessary to have a fan which work continually. So in this project we insert two green and red lamps beside the motor with two conditions. When the motor is on, turn on a green lamp, which show greenhouse conditions is good, and when the motor is off, turn on a red lamp to have an alarm of greenhouse conditions. Let's start with previous project. First I want to define suitable tags for two new outputs. You have seen how we can define a tag in middle of programming. If you want you can define all tags and then start programming. In the left side, click on PLC tags and double click on show all tags. As you see, here you can see all PLC tags and can manage them. Now you see previous tags which have been defined before. Let me define H1 tag for green light, which its output address is Q0.1.
Now I want to find H2 tag for red lamp. As you see, in address columns we can change the address. Here, we must determine, the address refers to PLC input, output, or its memory. Then determine byte number and its bit number. See here, my red lamps with H2 tag is connected to Q0.2. So I define this address for H2 tag. Well, after defining PLC tags, come back to OB1 block to extend the program. We don't need to change this program which related to three phase motor. So I'm going to write a program for green lamp in next network. We want when the motor is on, the green lamp is on too. So we can use three phase motor program for the green lamp too. But now I want to write it in another way. With set and reset instructions. That's simple. We need to set the green lamp with start contact and reset with stop contact. So see how I write this program. As you see, I can use tags instead of addresses. Because we've defined them before in PLC tags table. This program works like three phase motor. Start contact set green lamp on and stop contact reset it. Pay attention if both contacts are activated, the green lamp will be off, because CPU execute reset instruction after set, so reset has priority over set instruction. Finally, state of red lamp is inverse of green lamp. So in the next network, I'm going to use a contact of green lamp with negative instruction for red lamp. As you see when I define H2 tag in output part, this comment is inserted here automatically. This the comment which has been defined for H2. Ok, this program is complete. Now let's test it. It's expected you can test this program with TIA simulation and force table like previous videos. In this video, let me to use a watch table beside force table. So in the left side, click on add new watch table. Well let me to have a better view. Now, in the watch table, select three outputs addresses to see their values. As you see, when I change start or stop contacts, I can see my output's value in watch table. Ok in this video we learn negate instruction, and also set and reset in ladder language.
In next video first we'll have a review of these instruction in FBD language. And then continue to learn other bit logic operations. Thank you for watching.